afternoon and welcome back to another episode of um, Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. So, um, just a quick recap on the last episode. We started the Abbey Grange affair and essentially we basically spoke to the, sh uh, the Shard there, the, um, one of the victims and her maid and um, cracked open the safe in that as well. Um, this is actually a very short case, so there'll be just literally three episodes of this. So, what we're going to do now um, is we can now go and see the actual crime scene itself. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. That must be the murder weapon. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Quite a large stick. A formidable weapon. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Okay, so while it's prompt, uh, prompts us to do a I thing, we've got two deductions to make first. So. Okay, so, um, for the moment that looks like that's it, so, okay, uh, it appears that the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Okay, um, so... This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. It is rather strange that only one of these glasses has dregs of bee's wing inside it, while the other two are clear. A decanter standing next to the open bottle, an inseparable pair indeed. Chateau Calon Ségur, French wine, Grand Cru. Okay, so let's look at that. Uh, 
Okay, so um, made that conduction. Sailor's knot. That's interesting. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. I will take it with me. This is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. Okay, so. The hunting scene. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. Not take the more expensive item. Okay, um, I clearly haven't checked everything on here. Done that. Done that. So I don't understand why it's saying that we've not completed the examination. Clearly, everything is indicated that we have. Okay. Um, interesting. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Your ladyship? Definitely not adding up, that's for sure. Let us see how the rope was cut. The fibers at the end of the rope are smoothly cut. Let us try to find out what tool was used to cut the rope. The fibers from this cut appear to be different. Fibers from this cut appear to be different. If I cut the rope with a knife, it matches the original.
guess we can match them up, yep. Come on, Toby. We need the best nose in the British Empire on this case. <laughs> I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. Right. I'm assuming that uh, he'll come with us automatically. Oh, yeah. reading it as though it's an actual book. <coughs> Search, Toby. So I'm guessing we just literally If you've got the PlayStation, you press R2, it actually makes him run. The intruders entered the shed for some reason when they were making off with the silverware. The scent leads to the well. I should check it. The intruder's trail is lost behind this wall. The criminals left the house through the French window. They walked to the shed, then across to the well, before fleeing by climbing over the wall. I wonder why they chose such a winding route.
Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. Okay, so, um... We're going to check the well, I presume, now. Bags of seed. Some empty bags were recently moved. This hook might be useful. Small gardening tools, nothing of great interest. This old suitcase sounds hollow. It must be empty. Okay, so we've done that, so now we've done that, we are... There's something glittering at the bottom there, but how can I reach it? Silverware. This is hardly a coincidence. The Brackenstall coat of arms. It appears that we have found the stolen silverware. Okay. Okay, so all that, as you just saw that, was just essentially for us to search for a sailor. Which I think we pretty much, if you're following this, would have got worked out.
Inspector, I have recovered the stolen silverware. You are a wizard, Mr. Holmes. And where is it? In the garden well. Excuse me? Unique, isn't it? Rather absurd. What is the point of stealing silverware and then throwing it down into a well? Perhaps it was used as a temporary hiding place. Or simply the thieves wanted to get rid of it. It is up to us to solve this mystery. Hmm. See, I think the shard clearly knows what's happened. Um. So we have to get some sort of establishment, I'm guessing, as a sailor. We found your silverware, Lady Brackenstall. It had not been taken very far. Is that true? I am very thankful to you, Mr. Holmes. Your ladyship? We found your mistress's silverware. Oh, that's good news. You really are as clever as they say. Indeed. I don't think, obviously, Holmes is that impressed. Right, so he's back at the window. Okay, so I'm going to end this episode here, so um, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and that you are enjoying what is left of your weekend, if you haven't already hit Monday uh, somewhere else in the world, so uh, whatever you're doing, um, happy gaming everybody and have a good evening here from the UK.